Oh, hey guys. How's it going? Welcome to the vlog. We got sea bass on the camera today. Excited for that. Today's the first official day of meat prep for Hawaii. Dropping a weight class too at the same time. Weighed in about 97 keys this morning. I'm really, really excited. This will be my first time on the platform in five years. We got primary deadlift day today. Gonna hop in with Mike for that. We're gonna record a little behind the scenes of everything meat wise. Just gonna have some fun in Sacramento. Let's follow along, subscribe if you haven't already. Luckily that's our last back down. Dear Lord, did that hurt. Word of advice, do not deadlift on four hours of sleep. I'm going a little off program today, sorry Brad. I wanna make sure I get some, some work in with Mike. So we're doing these hammer strength presses. I'm trying to be a little bit more methodical with the way I do my accessory work. Um, I used to be that guy that was like, you know, full ROM is king, all that. It's kind of opening my eyes. Like you can definitely be better about the way that you execute movements and get more out of them just by actually understanding like where your active range of motion is. One of the reasons why they're, it's so hard for them to manage like loading over time, like they, they overdo a lot of movements, is because they don't understand that. Like if you find yourself not being able to put as much effort into your accessory work, being a little bit smarter about that and understanding like, okay, from here to here is kind of where my pec's most active, that's where I want to get out of the exercise, and just kind of executing it that way, I think that's going to be better for a lot of power lifters. And honestly, maybe even just bodybuilders, right? Because we want to grow the right, right muscle. Then just kind of like going full wrong. It's funny. I never thought I'd be that guy, but here we are. We're SPDing right now. It's a little off from our normal timing. We're doing it, we're getting it in. We're about to take our last warm up. Uh, it's week one. Um, what I'm basically trying to do is just beat my previous top sets from the last block by two and a half keys. That's all I'm gonna do. Um, and we'll see if maybe we can use that to eke out, uh, you know, a two and a half to five kilo personal best at the end of the block. Especially with me losing weight, I'm not trying to massively push the top sets. Speaking of which, that's kind of the topic of this video. Let's talk about it. How is it that I'm gonna get stronger while cutting? Well, a lot of people don't seem to know that it's possible and honestly probable if you do your nutrition correctly. So at this point in time, I've gotta lose about seven kilos to make the weight class. Now, I'm probably not gonna cut that. I'm probably gonna cut about four kilos and then water cut the rest. There's three things that I'm doing that are going to make it easier on me. The first is that I'm cutting training volume down. So I just, at being in a caloric deficit, have less of an ability to do work. So therefore, I'm just gonna cut down on volume and do what matters, which is the heavier stuff. So last block I was doing I think Brad had me doing two or three more sets on average per lift. Now, I'm just simply focusing on overloading a smaller number of sets slowly over time, and hopefully that'll match up with my recovery deficit. I forget what my best triple is, but it's somewhere in the range of 200 to 205. Yeah, if, if all goes well, we could probably see a triple PR. I'm traditionally way worse at reps than I am at singles, just the way my body's built. I figure if I can do 202 or 205 for a, a triple at the end of the block, probably be feeling pretty good. And who knows, like if I feel really, really good, I might even take 250 at the end of this block, I don't know. 
just kind of depends on on where things are a month is a lot of time speaking of which time that's gonna be tip number two give yourself lots of time I think a practical recommendation would be about one pound a week for most people um, although I think a more accurate one would be anywhere between half to 1% of your body weight depending on what your body fat levels are at Mine are decently high, they're probably around 23 at this point. Tip number three on this, protein, 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 protein. Uh, I think this is fairly obvious to a lot of people that protein is important for preserving muscle mass. Preserving muscle mass is important for preserving strength. But what I think a lot of people don't get to, and this is purely anecdote, but I have noticed that higher protein intakes as a strength athlete tend to make my joints feel better. So the typical sports recommendation is like 0.8 grams per pound of body weight. Um, and honestly, the typical bro recommendation is usually like 1.0 uh, grams per pound, 2.2 grams per kilo. Somewhere in that 1.2 to 1.3 range, um, there seems to be just better joint recoverability when you're having that. Add to the fact that you're, you're kind of losing some of that, that cushion in the form of body fat, uh, and the fact that protein has a very high satiety level, uh, and I think it'll just keep you fuller while you're dieting. As far as like recovery goes, because that does become an issue when you are in a caloric deficit, definitely set your protein a little bit higher than you normally would. Um, not just for typical dieting reasons, but for the purpose of strength, uh, just recovering a little bit better, at least in terms of your, your soft tissue. That is not me benching. That is Mr. Seabass benching. He's stronger than me today. Look at that. Woo. Look at that form. That's a throwback. Last tip. Last tip for you guys. The most important one. Use a non-linear diet. So some kind of calorie cycling. Some people call it carb cycling, whatever. This is the most important factor. So instead of having a consistent calorie deficit across the week, go bigger calorie deficit at the beginning of the week and then spend a few days at maintenance and then put your heaviest sessions on the days where you're actually in at a maintenance level of calories. I would say either two or three high days and four to, to five low days. Make your make your training stress lower on, the, on those lower days, especially that last lower day because that's when you're gonna, probably gonna feel the worst. I'm also gonna tell you that your diet adherence is probably gonna be way, way better doing it that way because it's much easier to stay in a big calorie deficit for four days at a time, a slightly smaller calorie deficit for a long period of time. This is where we're gonna cut off the first vlog. If you guys don't follow the 3SB crew for some reason, focus on them, dear Lord. Follow Avi, follow Seabass. Follow me wherever you can find the name Joe Stanick. TikTok, Instagram, like the channel, support the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Peace.